Hello, my name is Dr. William Hong, and I want to thank you for reviewing this presentation today on prostate cancer, grading, and staging. If you've been recently diagnosed with prostate cancer, then you may be reviewing this presentation today to learn more about how prostate cancer is graded and staged and how this impacts your treatment decision making. So let's first begin with the discussion regarding prostate cancer grading. So let's talk a bit about how prostate cancer is graded. In other words, how the aggressiveness of the cancer is determined. Traditionally, the grading has been performed through something called a Gleason score, with the score ranging from number one to number five. One being the least aggressive and grade five being the most aggressive. When a pathologist reviews the prostate biopsy slide, they look at the glands and determine if any of the glands qualify as prostate cancer. And if so, they assign it a grade from one to five. With the current grading system, grade one and two prostate cancers are no longer considered cancerous. And therefore the lowest possible grade currently is grade three, with grade three being the most similar to a normal prostate gland and grade five being the most abnormal. Many prostate tumors, however, have heterogeneity or a mixture of different grades of cancer within the tumor. Therefore, a Gleason sum is commonly used to give an overall score or degree of aggressiveness. For example, a tumor which consists of Gleason grade three and three would give you a score of six. In this particular example, we can see that this tumor contains both Gleason grade three and grade four components, giving it a Gleason sum of seven. Over time, there has been developed a more simplified grading system called the Gleason group score. In this system, the Gleason grade group goes from one to five. And this correlates with the more traditional Gleason score or Gleason score pattern, which is based on two numbers. You can see here that grade six prostate cancer, which is Gleason three plus three, is now simplified as Gleason grade group one. In this particular situation, grade seven cancer can be differentiated into Gleason three plus four, which is called group two, versus Gleason 4 plus 3, which is called group 3. Highly aggressive tumors, which include Gleason grade 9 and 10 prostate cancers, are called grade group 5. At this current time, frequently biopsy reports will continue to provide information using both of the grading systems, as this transition occurred not too long ago. Let's now move on to discuss prostate cancer staging. Just as grade described the aggressiveness of the cancer, the stage describes how extensive the cancer is and whether it has traveled beyond the prostate. Traditionally, prostate cancer staging has ranged from stage one to stage four. Stage one typically refers to prostate cancer that is confined to the prostate. In this stage of prostate cancer, there are a variety of treatments which may be offered, including active surveillance or observation. Stage two prostate cancer, however, demonstrates more extensive disease, and this can encompass both lobes or halves of the prostate. And this stage may incorporate more elevated PSA values or higher Gleason scores. Now, if the prostate cancer is what we consider locally advanced, or perhaps extending beyond the prostate or into the seminal vesicles or beyond the borders or is associated with very high Gleason scores, then this is considered stage three prostate cancer. 
And finally, stage four prostate cancer involves prostate cancer that has traveled outside of the prostate to other areas, such as the lymph nodes, to bone, or other adjacent organs, such as the rectum. Another staging system, which you may hear about, includes the TNM staging system. And this includes essentially what is described as the tumor, node, and metastasis staging system. In this staging system, the tumor first is staged, which goes from one to four, and then the nodes are staged, as well as the presence of metastatic disease. In order to determine the extent of metastatic disease, imaging studies, including a CT scan or MRI of the abdomen and pelvis, as well as a bone scan, may be ordered by your physician. In this particular situation, the CT or MR is done to look for lymphatic spread of prostate cancer to any lymph nodes located in the pelvis or in the rest of the abdomen. Bone scans are obtained in order to determine whether or not there's any bony involvement or spread of prostate cancer to the bones. Here is an example of a CT scan with a visible lymph node. And this is another example, this time of a bone scan, demonstrating spread of prostate cancer to the bone. There are currently several PET scans which are in use and are coming down the line, which will be very useful to determine whether or not prostate cancer has spread beyond the prostate or has recurred following primary prostate cancer treatment. These include both axiomen PET scans as well as a PSMA PET scan. At the end of the day, we use both grading and staging to determine the most appropriate treatment for your prostate cancer. This concludes our brief presentation on prostate grading and staging. Hopefully this presentation has provided you with some useful information. If there are further questions, or if you'd like to view additional videos on prostate cancer, please scan the QR code listed here on this slide or enter the website link noted here on this slide as well. Thank you.